procedure today is actually a very difficult operation on a patient who has a glottic stenosis. Uh, she has scar tissue between the arytenoid cartilages from a prior intubation. She, she was rather sick in the past, required repeated intubations, and was on the respirator for a while. And now she has what appears to be fused arytenoids and needs another procedure. Uh, very difficult because she is not in the best of medical conditions, medical health, and probably wouldn't uh, do very well with a very large open procedure. Uh, there's too high of a risk of aspiration. Uh, so we've chosen the OmniGuy because of the uh, facility of using the fiber at different angles and again because of the line of sight issue. Together with Dr. Shapshe, I was uh, able to uh, do a partial arytenoidectomy today to open up the posterior part of the glottis took out a little bit of the vocal process and the, the left vocal cord, and then we lasered the suprastomal granuloma um, in order to um, alleviate that obstruction, which would have been another problem, or it would have gotten in the way of us decannulating her. And we were able to completely vaporize a very large granuloma right above the trach site. We were able to visualize the entire thing, and we actually obliterated 100% of it. I always have great visualization the, you know, that plume doesn't build up in the laryngoscope, so I'm always, I can see really well, and it helps a little bit with bleeding too. It, it pushes the blood out of the way, and that also makes me feel safer. It enables me to do more with limited exposure in difficult uh, airway situations, such as the tracheal stenosis, the glottic stenosis, the fixation of the vocal folds. It just enables me to do this, e this procedure a lot easier. And I think it's more intuitive for the surgeon to use a handpiece or a fiber than it is a uh, joystick with micro manipulator. I find when I use the waveguide, I have more flexibility. I can get in spaces that are tighter um, and harder to access. There's also a feeling I have of safety when I use the waveguide because I feel very confident that I know where the beam is at all times almost as if I'm more in control of what's happening down at the, where the laser is, the energy is being delivered. Uh, the, uh, the ability to do more uh, for our patients with both recurrent respiratory papillomas, to go beyond the surface of the upper surface of the vocal folds, but to go subglottically and into the trachea, tracheobronchial tree, I think has been an enormous benefit for my patients. Uh, these are areas we just couldn't uh, access very well with the CO2 laser, which is the laser of choice, and uh, we had to use other laser wavelengths which were less optimum in terms of thermal effects and collateral damage. So it's easier to teach our physicians, and since we're in a teaching institution, it's easier actually to teach and guide our younger physicians and train them to do some of the endoscopic procedures that were a little bit more difficult. There are certainly, I would say, at least 30% of the cases I do, I would not be able to do without it. Again, because of that flexibility, it allows me to get into tighter spots. The, the system has uh, really provided a whole new uh, area for us to, uh, to, provide, to uh, benefit for our patients, and that the use of the fiber uh, has enabled us to do more procedures that we could do in the past.